Hi everyone. My name is Dale Schlunt and today I'd like to speak just very briefly about what it is that historians do. What does the profession entail? I think there are many misconceptions about what historians do. One of them being that they just simply read nonstop for the main purpose of accumulating information uh, with the goal of trying to remember all of that such as events or dates. Of course, that's not a complete fallacy, right? I mean, there we do read a lot, uh, but it's not just for the purpose of trying to gain just tons of information and that being the end goal. Arguably, what historians do is they study change over time, as well as continuity, right? what remains the same, in other words. But arguably, the more important thing is what changes regardless of the context in which it's being studied. So for instance, whether we're talking about an organization, a ideology, right, such as Christianity or democracy, or if we're studying the developments of nations or world events in history, regardless of the context, we are studying change over time. Why? One of the reasons is, is so that we can gauge whether or not we are progressing regressing or stagnating. In other words, are we getting better? We could use an example that lends itself very well to illustrating this, such as the study of indigenous peoples of the Americas. Undoubtedly, regardless of the time you took a course, a history course, wherever, whatever level that is, what have you, you have studied about the the oppression, the atrocities that were committed against Native Americans for centuries in the past, the stealing of land, the disruption of their culture, etc., etc. Yet if we look at the contemporary debates and the dialogue that's occurring today, especially in terms of discrimination, we often hear about Muslim Americans, African Americans, and other minorities, and that is horrific to be sure. Yet what do we not hear? We don't hear about the American Indian. And unfortunately, that leads us to believe, because we've studied the past, that leads many to believe that, you know what, change over time, because I'm not hearing this in the dialogue, everything must be okay in that regard. Native Americans are doing well. And unfortunately, that is another fallacy. And that is the point of studying change over time. Allow me to share some t statistics with you. According to the U.S. Census Bureau in 2017, 26.8% of indigenous peoples were living in poverty. This is especially true on reservations, by the way. Of course, on reservations, we also see some of the highest rates of chronic illness, such as diabetes, alcoholism, suicide, and homicide. Something that was in the news, just to add to this example, if I may, was the Dakota Access Pipeline, finished in 2017, if I remember correctly. This was a oil pipeline meant to transport oil across a large section of our country from North Dakota all the way to Illinois. And it was supposed to be more efficient, uh, eco-friendly, on and on. So we're, we're supposed to replace some of those conventional modes of transportation, such as rail or tractor trailer. Yet there were a couple of problems, and one of those being is that this pipeline was going to go through what was historically significant and culturally significant lands to Native Americans in the northern part of our country, North Dakota, South Dakota. In addition to that, this pipeline was going to be placed underneath, dug underneath, and put underneath the main water supply for the Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota. Water for so many individuals. And of course, we all know how oil pipelines are certainly not foolproof. There were protests, but unfortunately, long story short, with the ultimate help of the federal government, this pipeline, its construction came to fruition, and now it 
transports oil. And the debate continues on to whether or not this has been a disservice to indigenous people. The problem here is, how many of us, after hearing all of this, and I challenge the question, I put the question to myself as well, how many of us are going to stay up tonight? How many of us are going to stay up questioning why we have not done something more? Why have we not supported? Why have we been led to believe that change over time? We're not like we, the people of the past that have oppressed many of these indigenous peoples. How many of us are going to stay up and say, what can I do? That is a question perhaps we can all ask ourselves. Something that is, well, just as depressing originally, but where we do see progression, change over time, is the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment is a reconstruction amendment. And basically what it says is it was meant to give African Americans ex-slave citizenship. And what it says is individuals that are born or naturalized in the United States of America are citizens, that states will not be able to take individuals life, liberty, or property away without the due process of law. And also, just as significant, that everyone has the right to equality under the law, equal treatment, equal protection of the law. Yet, before we go any further, I think it's important, what can we take away from this? Again, change over time. One thing, I will pose a question that I want you to consider throughout the rest of this, and hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, the examples that we're going to discuss will answer this question. Yet, consider this, what dictates changes in society? Is it laws or amendments as we're discussing? Or is it belief systems, ideals, or what we call ideologies, right? What dictates changes? What's most significant or influential? So let's think about that. Right? What is more significant, laws or ideas or ideologies, beliefs that people hold? The 14th Amendment was significant in one of the more disheartening Supreme Court cases, Plessy versus Ferguson. This led to, this led to the perpetuation of segregation, what we call separate but equal. Of course, it was very rarely equal. Yet in that case, the question came up whether or not separate or segregation violated the 14th Amendment. The majority on the Supreme Court found that it did not. It did not. And of course, this led to, or at least furthered, the segregation we saw in the Jim Crow era in the 20th century. Yet, it gets better, I assure you. Fast forward over 50 years later, Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954, the Supreme Court starts the process, their decision starts the process of desegregation in schools, which furthers that into other contexts where we desegregate. Guess what they used to justify this? The 14th Amendment. Fast forward over another 50 years, the same-sex marriage Supreme Court case in 2015, essentially legalizing, given legal protection to same-sex marriages. Guess what they used to justify this? The 14th Amendment. Amazing. Yet here's the point. The text in the 14th Amendment did not change. What did? Our ideas. The ideologies to which we subscribed. And as a result, our interpretation of that 19th century amendment whose texts never changed. Think about that. What does that tell us? Right? What can we take away? Again, change over time. It tells us that we can change things over time. It says that the individual has it, you have influence. With that said, I would leave you with or conclude with this story. It is a story about a relatively well-known individual and author, Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau was a very principled individual who stood by his principles, adhered to them for the most part, I would say. And this individual stopped paying what was a local, a poll tax. You didn't have a federal income tax at this time, middle of the 19th century. 
as a form of protest. A couple years later, the sheriff comes up to Thoreau and asks him to pay his back taxes. At this point, 19, or excuse me, 19, 1846, the Mexican-American War had already begun. He continues to refuse to pay the taxes because he feels those taxes are going to go towards this war, number one, a war that most historians would agree was a bigger nation bullying the U.S., bullying a smaller nation, Mexico. Thoreau also felt that the aim of this war was to extend and perpetuate the institution of slavery, which its aim in some many ways was, was excuse me. Thoreau goes to jail. And someone comes and pays the fine or the taxes. Yet, nevertheless, the point here is, here we have an individual that was standing up to make a difference. It shows us that individuals, many of whom history has forgotten, have influenced our world. Of course, I am not suggesting that we go home to our significant other, our husband, wife, or girlfriend, boyfriend, or what have you, and say, honey, tonight, we're going to make a difference. We're going to jail. No, of course not, right? Yet what I am saying is that we all can make a difference, that it shows you do not have to be the Abraham Lincolns, the FDRs or the JFKs or the Martin Luther King Juniors to have a positive influence in your world. Thank you so much for your time.